Who plays midfield for the Lady Riders soccer team. She's escorted tonight by Tommy and Rachel Price. Ava's favorite team to play is Salina. Her game day ritual is listening to her pump up music on her way to the field. Her favorite LR LRS memory is sprinklers going off in the middle of the game. Ava's advice to upcoming Lady Rider soccer players is don't take time for granted. It goes way too fast. We want to wish Ava good luck on the rest through. of her season and all her future Stop. endeavors. Number 10, Ava Price. Number 12, Jillian Tomberlin. Jillian has been a leader on the back defensive line for all four years of her Lady, Lady Rider soccer career. She's escorted tonight by Chase, Chance Tomberlin, Amanda Luffridge, Ashley Slife, and Garrett Whetstone. Jillian's favorite team to play is Shawnee, and her game ritual is having her hair braided. Jillian's favorite LRS memory is beating Liberty Benton to win districts. Yeah, Jillian's advice through. to upcoming Lady Rider soccer players and is right don't there. wish the practices Perfect. or games would go, go faster. Just touch. Because sooner than you know, you were yep. a senior and you wish you had more time. One we more. want to wish Jillian best of luck on the rest of her season Perfect. and her future endeavors. <laughs> Number 12, Jillian Tomberlin. Number 14, Captain Reese Rabel. Reese is a part of the midfield for the Lady Rider soccer team. She's escorted tonight by her parents, Jeremy and Tammy Rabel. Reese's favorite team to play is Salina. Her game day rituals were bringing Kate and Allie to the field and praying. Reese's favorite LRS memory is when Morgan Hesse got sprayed by sprinklers during a game. Her advice to upcoming Lady Rider soccer players is don't take time for granted. We want to wish Reese good luck on the rest of her season and all her future endeavors. Number 14, Captain Reese Rabel. Number 22, Genevieve Brown. Genevieve has been a part of the defense for the Lady Riders soccer team. She's escorted tonight by James Brown and Kimberly Ray. Genevieve's favorite team to play is Walpaw. Genevieve has always asked her mom what jersey to wear on game day, even though she knows. Her favorite LRS mo moment is beating Liberty Benton her sophomore year. Genevieve's advice to upcoming Lady Riders soccer players is don't take a single moment for granted and to always have fun. We want to wish right Jen good luck on the rest of her season and all her future endeavors. One Number more. 22, Jen Brown. <laughs> Number 23, Leah Brackman. Leah has been the goalkeeper for the 2024 Lady Riders. She's escorted tonight by her parents, Nick and Krista Brackman. Leah's favorite team to play is Salina, and her game day rituals are listening to music, put on her left hand glove first, and only wearing shin guard sleeves for games. Leah's favorite LRS memory is when the sprinklers went off during one of the games. And her advice to the future Lady Rider soccer players is enjoy every moment you are together. Even though it feels like forever, time is moving way faster than you think. Good luck, Leah, on the rest of your season and all you do in the future. Number 23, Leah Brackman. Number 25, Captain Kelly Holsinger. Kelly plays target for the Lady Rider soccer team. She is escorted tonight by Jamie Jackson and Eli Holsinger. Kelly's favorite team is to play is Walpole. And her game day ritual is to listen to music at volume 25. Her favorite LRS memory is beating Liberty Benton on PKs to win the district championship. And her advice to upcoming Lady Rider soccer players is to cherish every moment. It goes faster than you think. We want to wish Kelly good luck on the rest of her season and all that she does in the future. Number 25, Captain Kelly Holsinger. Number 27, Captain Emma Freewalt. Emma plays midfield for the Lady Riders. She's escorted tonight by her parents, Jeremy and Christy Freewalt. Emma's favorite team to play is Salina. Emma's game day ritual, to eat a bagel. Emma's favorite LRS memory is the celebrations after an LRS win. And her advice to upcoming Lady Rider soccer players is to make every second count when you're on the LRS, you're, you are an LRS player. It goes way too quick. We want to wish good luck to Emma on the rest of her season and all her future endeavors. Number 27, Captain Emma Freewalt. Number 39, Captain Kaylin Burbright. 
Kaylin has been a part of the defense defensive force for the Lady Riders soccer team. She's escorted tonight by her parents, Brent and Jill Verbreich. Kaylin's favorite team to play is Brian. Kaylin's favorite LRS memory is beating Liberty Benton and PKs at the district finals for sophomore year. <laughs> Kaylin's advice for her upcoming Lady Rider soccer player is enjoy every moment as it will fly by. We want to wish the best of luck to Kaylin on the rest of her season and all her future endeavors. Number 39, Captain Kaylin Burbright. Ladies, we want to thank you for your dedication to the Lady Rider Soccer Program. We want to wish you all the best in your future adventures. We want to remind you that once a rider, always a rider. And we'll see you in August at the Alumni Game. We'd also like to take the time to congratulate and honor the seven Bath Wildcat seniors this evening. Number one, Carmen Kunkelman. Number two, Hayden O'Donnell. Number five, McKenna O'Keefe. Number seven, Faith Clark. Number nine, Haley Hale. Number 17, Haley Kors. And number 13, Juliana Heights. Good luck, ladies, on the rest of your season and all the rest of your future endeavors. Again, we want to thank all of you for being a part of tonight's Lady Riders Senior Night. And we want to wish the eight seniors, best of luck, and thank them for the last four years and all their contributions to Lady Rider Soccer. Albert Sporting Goods, American Legion Post 323, All Glaze Equipment Rental, Capabilities, David Wabacher Attorney, Eagles 767, FCA, Fowler's TV, Freedom Marking Strategies, Grand Lake Roofing, Guaneri's Pizzeria, Jackalope Stash, Larry Schaff Auto Sales, Laura Yelton State Farm, MHS Alumni Foundation, Miller Funeral Homes, Minster Bank, Plus One Professional Real Estate, Writer Rooters, Roots Pub, St. Mary's Foundry, Sean Barnett Electrical, Spees Chiropractic and Wellness Center, Spring Street Storage, TSC, and Varsity Lane.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Rider Nation Station. I'm Lance Ibram. Alongside of me is Seth Hertenstein. Welcome aboard. What do you think about the game tonight? A little couple comments before we talk about some stats. Yeah. Um, as far as Doug Beal goes, as far as the playoffs go, this game doesn't mean much to either team. Uh, so they'll probably both be looking to stay healthy and maybe maybe game plan for, for their next opponents, work on some things, maybe some set pieces. Uh, just some things to prepare for the playoffs. As you've uh, said, it's all a warm-up for the uh, tournament, and this game uh, counts as that as well. So a uh, little bit of uh, stats before we get the player introduction. So St. Mary's comes into this game with an overall record of 7-9-0, and uh, WBL 5-3-0, and and they're sitting uh, tied right now in uh, fourth place for the WBL. Bath is sixth place for the WBL. And um, Bath comes in at 7-6-3, and the WBL 3-3-2. Three, three, and two. And if you look at some combinations, what we're looking for here, is there any team that, you know, that uh, Bath beat that beat St. Mary's? And that's not the case this year at all, Seth. So St. Mary's, as you know, in the WBL beat Salina, Defiance, Walpock, Van Wert, and Kenton. And their three losses in the WBL came from OG, Shawnee, and Elida. And then Bath, their three wins were Kent, Van Wert, and Wapakoneta. And their three losses were Elida, OG, and Salina. So we're going to tune out our voices here for just a moment and listen in for the PA for the player introductions. We'll be back in a moment. Lady Riders. In order to make this match as enjoyable as possible, please represent your school and your community in a positive and respectful manner by following the rules, speaking and acting responsibly, showing courtesy and respect for all involved, including fans, officials, coaches, administrators, and, of course, your team and their opponents. Let's respect each other, and of course, respect the game. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a nation with freedoms like no other. So to celebrate those freedoms, and those who have defended or are currently defending them, we ask that you please stand, remove your hats, as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Point Manor. The national anthem will be performed tonight by members of our JV team, Patty Patterson and Ryan Chisholm. in accordance with the procedures adopted by the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Let's welcome and thank Josh Mullenkamp and Don Baumstar for being a part of tonight's match. And now let's meet the team. First for our guests, the Wildcats and Fab. They are coached by Lamar Houston, along with his assistants, Gabby Scott, Liam Mance, and Allie Rowe. The starters for out the Wildcats tonight are Number two, senior, Hayden O'Donnell. Number five, senior, McKenna O'Keefe. Number seven, senior, Faith Clark. Number nine, senior, Haley Hale. Number 10, sophomore, Marley Mason. Number 12, sophomore, Gwen Faust. Number 16, freshman, Addie Rex. Number 17, senior, Haley Kaur. Number 20, junior, Maddie Lanebecker. And number 21, Junior Gabby Gonzalez. And in the net tonight for the Wildcats, number one, Senior Carmen Conkleman. And now for your 
four, St. Mary's Memorial, Lady Riders. The Riders are coached by Nick Wilson, along with his assistants, Jeff James and Ashley Petrusky. The starters for the Lady Riders tonight are number seven, junior, Sos Smaker. Number 10, senior, Ava Price. Number 12, senior, Jillian Cumberland. Number 14, senior captain, Reese Rabel. Number 21, sophomore, Piper Triplett. Number 22, senior, Jenny Brown. Number 25, senior captain, Kelly Holsinger. Number 26, sophomore, Claire Turner. Number 27, senior captain, Evan Freewall. And number 39, senior captain, Kaylin Burbright. And in that time for Lady Riders, number 23, senior, Leah Brackman. We want to wish the best of luck to both teams, and we want to welcome you once again to Rough Rider Field and today's WBL match between the Lady Riders and the Bath Wildcats. Lance Ibrahim again, alongside of Seth Hertenstein. Looking forward to a WBL match between the St. Mary's Rough Riders and uh, Bath. And uh, we we're going through some stats before the uh, introductions and just a reminder of uh, what the uh, win-loss has been for the year. So St. Mary's again, overall 7-9-0 WBL, 5-3-0 sitting fourth in the WBL. Bath 7-6-3, 3-3-2 three, three, three sitting sixth in the WBL. Uh, they, they have a very similar win percentage overall and uh, very uh, uh, riders are ahead on win percentage in the WBL, but overall win percentage for uh, both teams is very similar. Riders are 625 in the WBL and 375. And something to, to note tonight is the, um, the goals for and the goals against for these two teams. St. Mary's has scored 45 goals, which is an average of three goals per game. And uh, they have given up, unfortunately, goals against 40, which is a 2.67. So that really tight margin is why you see what their record is. And then uh, Bath is 37 goals for, 26 goals against. They only average 1.6 goals against them in a game that's very stingy. So the Rough Riders are going to have to find a way to get past that keeper tonight. something that as a coach myself I would always like to find the harder competition yeah you can stack wins against weaker opponents but you're not going to make the team better than you. that's a great point Seth Bath's taking a run down the near side here broken up by Riders defense kicked out of bounds now cleared it out and uh, Riders choose to defend a throw in. Yeah, great point, Seth. We can see that uh, St. Mary's has played teams from every division this year, one through five. Bath has limited their play to Division three, to Division three, four, and five. Yep, and that'll uh, that'll be a big part of the the record difference there. Uh, I look to see an equally matched game tonight. Uh, both teams, like we said earlier, don't really have a whole lot they're playing for in this game, uh, but they are trying to prepare for the playoffs. Yep, we got, our, we got our first shot off the off the foot of bat, just wide of the net. We'll have a goal kick coming up for the Rough Riders. Great point, Seth. Is you you, you talk a lot about the uh, game doesn't matter, right? But once the whistle blows, it's interesting how players they go into player mode. You've done it, I've done it, and you'll see the ladies here tonight. They're going to go hip to hip, shoulder to shoulder, uh, as if it's any other game. And I think the coaches would expect that. Yeah, yeah, and especially tonight it's senior night. So right now we got eight uh, Rough Rider seniors on the field in the starting lineup. Um, several of those girls don't typically get a start, so uh, we'll see what kind of playing time they get tonight. Being their senior night, being that the game doesn't make too much of a difference other than prep for the playoffs. So uh, good opportunity for these girls to get some playing time uh, to kind of put a stamp on their senior season. Yeah, and, and maybe there's uh, some players in the margins and coaches are watching and seeing who breaks out, get an opportunity for some postseason play. Bath is uh, controlling the first couple minutes of the game here. Again, that could be because of the switch up lineup for the Riders. We'll see how long they stick with it. Uh, hopefully these girls continue to get some playing time, but uh, if coach isn't liking what he's seeing, he might, he might get them out of here mm -hmm. uh, pretty quick. Yep, great point. We got a handling call. Uh, against uh, Bath, so that was a hand in maybe an unnatural position, made contact with the ball, or ball made contact with the hand, so we've got an indirect kick coming up for the Rough Riders. 
Beautiful night here at Rough Rider Field, Seth. The weather couldn't be better. Field's in great condition. Bath taking a shot on goal here into the hands of Brackman. Riders are having a hard time connecting some of their passes. Uh, when they were playing against Elided the other night, they did a pretty good job possessing. We'll like to see the Riders get back to that. Yeah, good, good, good possession ball really counts here. And, and you mentioned they may be a little bit out of sorts. They may not have their normal starting lineup. Expect them to get settled in here right away and connect with some passes. There's some examples of some good passes right up the middle there. Freewalt looking to find a seam, didn't quite find it. Yeah, and as you said, you know, not playing with some of your same teammates that you usually do, you know, that might be a ball that a uh, different teammate is automatically running onto where uh, the current lineup might not recognize that right away. They're, they're going to have to talk. They're going to have to be a little bit more verbal than typical, and we've seen it in boys and girls game when they really get to know each other, trust each other. They don't even have to talk. They just know that a player's behind them. Yeah, and you see that a lot uh, on our boys' side with Vinny and um, Keller. They they have almost have a, a you know an extra sense that hey guys behind me I don't even need to stalk I don't even need to touch this ball um, let it go through my for my teammate and that's just years and years of playing with each other and sometimes you can build that that uh, chemistry pretty quick and sometimes it takes year it takes years great ball in here from Manker shot on just wide of the frame that was Reese Rabel with the shots. Yep, Manker to Rabel. Rabel just across the front of the net. Would have been nice to see somebody clean up on the back side. We can check this on the Larry Shaft Auto Sales instant replay. Seth, I don't think that was a half a ball yeah, yeah. From, the, uh, from the far post. And you saw the backside run getting there. Uh, just doesn't quite have the speed maybe or uh, didn't see the, the shot go off right away to, to get there quite in time. That's one of those I'm, I'm yelling at my teammate. Do whatever you got to do. <laughs> Slide. Uh, yep. You know, diving header. I don't care how you do it. Just get that ball in seal, that back post. Seal the back post yeah. if you can. Yeah, yeah, we call we call it the trash man. Somebody mm -hmm. pick up the trash back there. Yeah, you hate to see a ball get that close to the goal and not go in. Sometimes that, that comes back to haunt you. Riders are working up the far side of the field. Maker's got her hands on the ball for a throw in. And a little, little mishandle on the throw, and Bath steps up to take the ball away. Bath working down the middle of the field. And the backs are there to clean it up. See if we can turn this into a little bit of a run here. Bath working on the near side. We got really nice contact, as we expected. Hips and shoulders. Hard work stays in bounds. from Ava Price, the senior. Very limited playing time this season in varsity, but she is making every second count tonight. That looked like a very experienced move there, taking the player off the ball, using really good leverage from Price. Bath working the ball in the middle of the field here, looking for options. So far their attack has pretty much been through ball or through the middle, not a side ball. Last touch off the Rough Riders, got a throw in coming up here for Bath. Yeah, he lighted that, or uh, sorry, Bath does have some space here in the midfield if they want to use it, but so far we have not seen that. Freewall takes that ball away in the back. Riders have a chance for a counter here. If they can go, they've got options left. Bath, luckily for them, uh, was able to take that ball away, though. Manker working hard to get it back, though. She's not going to stop until she has it, and she has it, folks. Riders get a good chance to counter. We've got numbers coming. Manker can't quite get it off her foot. Bath defender working hard to steal it back. Yeah, Manker had a good shot there, beat the corner, but I think she had to wait a little bit for the team to catch up. Should be an offside call here, and we got it. Yeah, we had a great view of that one. Offsides by at least a yard or two. Yep, and the Riders got to be careful there because they're not really moving up together. Uh, coaches over here giving one of the players an earful uh, for not really paying attention to uh, the side where that girl was. So we Riders just stepped up there at the last moment. So they got to watch that a little bit. Be careful they don't get caught. So they need to flatten out that back line and not leave any seams for a for an attacker to get into there. Yeah, that's what you'd normally look for, but you can tell tonight that they're trying to play uh, more of a stopper sweeper. Uh, so they're not going to be flat, but they do got to make sure that that outside, whether that's a winger or what it is, uh, doesn't get behind her defender, but still in front of ours to where she's wide open out there. Mm -hmm. Now the sweeper can slide over and, and defend it, but uh, we don't really want to have a foot race there. We got a substitution coming in for the Rough Riders. Number 17, Kendall Davis enters the game. 
And we say if a price uh, gets a break. We were just talking about that young lady. What a good job she did. Hips and shoulders on the near sideline to take that ball away from Bath. Last touch off the header of Bath. Throw in Rough Riders on the foot of Manker. Taken away again by Bath. They're working the middle of the field again. And that may be their uh, main line of attack right now that we've seen is uh, they haven't gone flag to center yet. Ball's on the foot of Freewalt on the near side. Got looking for some options. space. Some options. Davis back to Freewald. Freewald looking for a shot on. Back it in that goal, Rough Rider. Makes it look easy. Put a nice bend on that ball and made it look easy. We'll check the replay here on the Larry Schaff Auto Sales replay. You see Freewald gets a little bit of space, puts that ball up, bends it just right, just out of reach of the keeper. We're going to take a look at that again. And I think that assist came from Price. Freewald head down, ball up. Look at the spin on that, Seth. And it's yep. really spinning away from the net, away from the keeper, but just enough to stay inside that yeah. backside. And what I like most about that is she takes the girl one-on-one, -on -one and she doesn't need a ton of space. She creates just a few feet of space, gets gets enough space where she can get a nice, nice step or two into the ball, and she launches it to the back of the net. I tell my players all the time, you don't need to blow, blow past the, you know, the other player. You don't need to create 10 feet of space. You just need one or two, and that's what she did there. Enough space for the ball, yep, right? exactly. Just enough space for the ball. So with uh, just uh, about 32 minutes on the clock, the Rough Riders go up 1-0 to zero over the Bath Wildcats. And Bath's controlling the ball in the middle of the field again, or at least trying to. Freewalt's giving a heck of a time here. Yep. And I like, the good, I like the contact, and the referee's letting them play on. Yeah, if they let that go all night, it might get interesting. I, I certainly like that kind of contact, but... Um, uh, we'll see how the girls react to that. Freewalt can get a little frustrated if she's getting knocked around a little bit, and she's definitely not going to just take it. She's going to give it right back. So just something to watch for as we go. Yeah, I agree with you. We like we like them to play on as long as it's no knees, no heads, you know, hands off. But that hips and shoulders business we just saw, Freewalt's an expert at that. Yeah. Riders are taking a run up the far side. Bath doesn't want to have any of that. So they kick it out, just barely out. we got a throw in coming up for the Rough Riders. I think Rabel's got the throw in into Manker. Looking for Manker. All right, and Bath looks the counter. Riders have a slightly different setup than I've seen all year, where um, Sweeper is playing super deep. Um, I'm curious if Bath's got somebody that's extremely fast that we haven't quite seen yet, um, and that's why they're playing super deep. Yeah, that's a good question. I guess we'll see if they've got somebody with that kind of speed. I think Turner's got the ball in her hands. Last touch, Bath. Turner with the throw in just to the top of the 18. And uh, Bath takes over the ball. Now, if, if Bath's able to get out of those, they've got a three-on-three -three, uh, advantage here. Uh, the Riders aren't keeping too many players back, and Bath is keeping three up most of the time. So something to watch. Sophie Manker's got the ball, dribbling through the box, trying to find somebody. And wins a corner. You know, as stingy as they are on or goals, goal kick, uh, yeah, I guess. Goal kick, goal kick uh, as stingy as Bath is on the uh, goals against at, uh, what do we say, 1.63 goals against average per game, you would think they'd be stacked uh, back here, but they're yeah. really not. They, they, they show that they've got some power front. And I, you got a great point, Seth. It'll be interesting to see with us keeping uh, triplet so far back, do they have somebody? with speed to be concerned of. Mm -hmm. I yeah. guess we'll see because we haven't seen it yet. Yeah, exactly. They haven't been able to connect that final ball. Their uh, center striker here is getting some space uh, as Lauren Jacobs has to step up sometimes. She's getting drawn out of position a little bit, out of necessity, uh, but that's leaving the bath player, the bath striker, with a little bit of space in front of our sweeper, Piper Triplet. So if they, she ever gets that ball, it's going to be something to watch. We'll see, yep. Tomberlin with the throw in, looking for Manker. Bath takes it away, crosses it to the middle of the field. Looking for maybe an overlapping run. Nope, takes an extra couple touches. That's what I was waiting for too, Coach. You can tell we're both coaches up here. <laughs> we would be screaming at our player, go, 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 yep, make that yep, run. Yep, uh, but she did not. Mid? Where's the mid? It was just one too many touches. And maybe that's what they were looking for there. Turner working on the near side or working hard against the near side. And now here's that overlapping run we're talking about. Turner still on the outside oh, for man, an opportunity. Great run. Holsinger's got to find her with that ball before a defender steps to her. It's a great run from Turner. Just got to recognize it. Yeah, that overlapping run is a real art, isn't it? You got to stay on sides and be able to move the ball while you're going full speed. I think we're going to have a physical game tonight, Coach. We've got uh, quite a few, and, and everything's been clean so far, in my opinion, so I like it, but uh, it's, it's, you can tell both, both teams want to get physical. 
Yeah, we have a term for that. It's called WBL soccer. Mm -hmm. Love it. And uh, it can be terrifying if you're not used to it. <laughs> All right, we got a, a handful of subs coming in. First for the Rough Riders uh, checking into the game, the freshman. Eliana Weigel enters the game, and a handful of uh, Wildcats enter the game. And as the game goes on, we'll get the, we'll get the Wildcats uh, uniform numbers and names and be able to announce them as they come in as well. Uh, Jacobs with the throw in on the near side. Yeah, I feel bad for any uh, Bath parents here uh, that has a hard time telling who their kid is because i got to be honest with you, the numbers on their jerseys are hard to read. <laughs> it's tough. Uh, so <laughs> my dad always made me wear bright cleats <laughs> so he could tell who I was. Find which one you are. Yeah, so. Yeah, we always say from the PA booth and from up here at Rider Nation Station, put your roster in numerical order. <laughs> You'll hear your kid's name a lot. So we've got that. The next one is some contrast on the uniforms. Yeah, nice. exactly. And Bath's wearing, you know, baby blue, uh, powder blue on top of uh, white. So yep. And they got some, something yellow written on the back, too. So <laughs> yep, <laughs> I have yep. no idea. And, but, uh, and lots of ponytails right across. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. It just might take us a minute here. So there's that work against uh, Triplet that you were talking about just a minute ago to see the reaction, and she handles it no problem. Nice lateral move down the field. Looking for Weigel on the near side. And looked like last touch off of uh, St. Mary's. So checking in for uh, Bath is number eight, Cameron McGee, freshman for the Wildcats. And returning to the game, or maybe checking in for the first time, 29, Riley Anderson for the Rough Riders giving... Uh, Tom Berlin a break. Throw in Bath. Bath working on the near side. Liet doesn't want anything to do with that. Clears it out immediately. And we got O'Keefe with the throw in for Bath. Wide open in the middle there. You don't want to see that if you're the Rough Riders. Got to put a man on that. Yeah, I'd like to see him uh, a man up or touching tight. Manker's working down the middle of the field looking for options. At foot skills, as you see, as always, Seth, moving the ball to the outside. Great run by Rabel. Can't quite get control of the ball, though. Riders are going to try to keep it down here, not let him out, but Bath has that open midfield, as I mentioned before. Riders aren't too tight, like you just mentioned, uh, so they are going to get those chances, but they haven't been able to connect them uh, beyond one or two passes out of the back. But here, they might have a chance. Nope, but she triples out of bounds. Again, she had a player to play in, uh, but they one, cannot find it. One too many touches. Yeah. And, and it could be uh, Coach Wilson may be telling him, you know, maybe don't touch tight right away and yeah. see if you can bait him into a longer pass. Yeah, and it's, it's so far it's been fine. It's worked. It's you worked know, out. It's, and it's not it's a problem. Out. So as long as that continues, then, yeah, keep doing it. So with 25 minutes left in the first half, Rough Riders have one shot, three saves. Wildcats have four shots, zero saves, and the Rough Riders are up one to nothing. And I think Caitlin Liet uh, snuck into the game uh, on me there. I missed her number 15 uh, playing in the back for the Rough Riders and uh, she's a sophomore. Free kick here for Bath. Not quite sure what the foul was. Or if, uh, no hand ups and no offside, so it must have just been a foul. Yeah, I thought it was an offsides call, but maybe that was a direct kick, so it must be, yeah, must, we may have had our first penalty there, Seth. Yep. Riders got some numbers going down the left. Looked like Davis working to Rabel. Last touch off of Rabel, throw in for Bath, changing direction, see if the Rough Riders can get it right back. Path looking for that next ball. Ball over the top, uh, but Piper Triplett's there. No problem for her. As, as we said, she's playing pretty deep, so gives her a little bit more time to chase the balls down. And she's definitely got some speed, so she yeah. usually doesn't have a problem anyway. Yeah, that was a, it, was, it was a little bit hard to see from here, but the uh, fans got a good view of it. Uh, Triplett with the left foot put that ball right on the line, just the perfect English to keep it right on the line. Bath took it away, but it was a really nice job keeping it inbounds. Freewall working up the middle to Menker. Menker looking for an opportunity here. Maybe back to Freewall. Looking for a seam. Got it. Got the seam back to Menker. Bath defender there to break up the play. And probably a wise choice for Bath. Riders had a little bit of momentum there. All right, we got a throw-in coming up for Bath before the throw-in coming into the game for the Rough Riders. Number five, Allison Anchorman, the sophomore. And also coming to the game for the Rough Riders. Return to the game, Claire Turner. And she's also a sophomore. I think Turner's going to take the throw in here on the far side. I'd like to see the Riders use the right side of the field a little bit more. They've been um, primarily going down the left. Uh, we got Weigel over here on the right. She's shown in previous games that she's improving, getting better, and she's definitely got some speed over here that I'd like to see the Riders use. A lot of speed for a freshman. Yeah. 
Her dad's from Coldwater. I wonder if that makes a difference. Yeah. <laughs> just, are they built for speed down that way? or? I don't know anything about speed, Lance. I <laughs> never had it, uh, and I, I'm definitely uh, never going to get it. So. You didn't need it. You <laughs> use other skills. <laughs> and unfortunately, I had to use other skills yeah, yeah, for yeah. a lack of speed. Hips and shoulders and uh, verbal yeah, uh, yeah. skills probably come in yeah. handy, too. A lot, a lot of hands <laughs> as well. A lot of hands, uh, yeah. Just don't tell the referee. <laughs> yep. Last touch for Bath. Rough Riders work hard to get that ball. we got a throw in up to Turner. Turner's working the, the, near, the far side there. Went out of bounds. Bath throw in on the far side. And here comes Turner again stepping the ball. The Riders can win this. They, we can get a nice run to the right side here. Right here, we got space on the right. Big opening. We need take. Weigel to make that run. She is. She can't quite get there. Now she's wide open on the right if we could connect it, but not seeing it. There it is. There's, There's the ball I was asking for. for. Hopefully it stays in for her. She's got the speed to probably get there. And she Went wins for, a corner. I hope. A oh, no, man, no another tough one. That's uh that's two questionable uh, goal kick calls, but it's all right. He's a he's a fellow former Rough Rider alumni, so I'll try not to uh, yell at him uh, uh, too much. Too much. So that was what you were looking for, Seth. Is you got Weigel on the right hand side, staying dark, staying out of the uh, in the out of the peripherals of Bath, and uh, that was that ball was perfectly placed yep. on the end line. That's where you. That's why you want to play on grass pitch and not turf. An example yeah, right yeah. there on turf. That would have been. 20 yards off the field. Yeah, and I don't know about your teams recently, uh, but all my teams, you know, we don't have these nice, beautiful fields like the <laughs> high schools do. So for the last couple of weeks until that rain came, we've been playing on what felt like turf or concrete, yes. uh, all those dry yeah. fields out there. So thankfully the high school, uh, most high school teams got wonderfully um, cared for fields, especially here at Rough Rider Field. Yeah, watered field that last month before the hurricane rain came was a, was crucial. One for safety. I mean, just hitting. And the, the boys even said and the girls said in the last month, even though it's a water field, they're like, man, it was hard uh, when they hit the pitch. Bats working the ball just on the far side there. Looking for an opportunity to center it up, maybe turn into what looked like could have been a, a corner kick and uh, came up short. So we got a go kick coming up for the riders and uh, checking in for Bath. Number two, Hayden O'Donnell, and uh, she's a senior. Looks like she's going to be playing up front for Bath. Brackman with the restart. I do like that the Riders goal kicks, they mix it up. They don't do the same thing every time. You'll notice we had our uh, defenders there wide of the box for a short, uh, but instead Brackman goes long. It's always good to mix it up. You don't want to tell the defense what you're doing every play. Yeah, it's a great point. And, and so far on our goal kicks, like in that, that last example, went right to the foot of Davis, so we kept possession of it. Pinker's working for the ball, but can't get it. Anchorman. Putting it right back out there to Manker. A little bit too much off the foot of Anchorman. We'll have a throw in for Bath and some more subs. Coming in for the Rough Riders, Olivia Halko and uh, Riley Ludicky coming in. And what other, I think uh, Emma Freewalt returning yep. to the game for the Rough Riders. And we'll have a bath throw in. All right, so far I'd say, Seth, the uh, possession control has been very even in the game. Uh, Rough Riders just, you know, off the foot of Freewald found one. As you said, she found just enough space to sneak one in there out of reach of the keeper. Other than that, possession has been the same and probably not as accurate as you would hope yeah. for uh, either team. I think their pass percentage for both teams is lower than they'd than Yeah, they'd Nick, like. and uh, especially since the last last time I saw the girls play, I, uh, it was against Elida, and both teams uh, played really well with possession. They found the right times to put those balls into space, but uh, knocked the ball around the midfield quite a bit. So that was fun to watch. Uh, Tonight, not quite as entertaining. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Bath had a bunch of early opportunities, but uh, after the Riders made some subs, uh, maybe got back to the starting lineup, we really haven't seen much danger out of them. So Slowed them down for sure. That last possession by Bath was one of their best ones as we were talking. That was about six or seven successful passes. Yep, and then a long ball into triplet there to clean it up. So didn't quite connect once again. Yeah, I don't know if that was their plan. After some nice passes, they may have been uh, a little bit impatient, which can happen with high school players. I feel like you have to take it to goal, and really there's no rush. Yeah, yep. So we got 18 minutes left on the clock here in the first half. Uh, a beautiful Rough Rider field. Rough Riders are up 1-0. to zero. Manker working the ball on the far side. 
looking for a runner. Great Caesar run by up Turner. Middle. Turner's up on the left-hand side, looking she, for options. Turner's been great so far tonight about those overlapping runs. Yeah, she and Menker have really got it down. There's Freewall looking to take that ball back and keep that run going. Bath breaks it up. Now Bath's got a couple of numbers up go. here. They, right? uh, they finally made that connection That's with that <laughs> girl. The one but, you been waiting on. But then <laughs> yeah. they can't connect the little, next pass. They had, a, they had a great chance there. 2, 12, 14, and 25 coming in for the Rough Riders. Jacobs returning to the game. Tomerlin back into the game. Rabel and Holsinger. As Rabel well. and Holsinger returning to the game. Yeah, both teams are doing a great job subbing. A little faster than we can keep up with. We need one more person up here keeping track of subs for us. Or two people with better talent than well, you and I. How about that? I'm sure there's plenty of those out there. That's easy to find. Yeah. Oh, we do have a wide option to Rabel if, if Jacobs can find her. Jacobs She's looking. handling the ball. Yep, Good to Halco. touch from Halco. And there you go. That's what you're looking for. Up to Rabel on the right-hand side. Cleared out by Bath. Throw-in coming up for the Rough Riders. I think Rabel will take the throw-in. Halco trying to hold the ball up. Can't keep hold of it, but Liet steps to it to win it. Uh, but gives up possession. Bath again has a chance to counter. They've got 3v3 here, but... So far, we have not seen him succeed with that, so. Nope, they had a little space, a nice overlapping run there. Bath's working the ball down the far side, and they have a, had a little bit of space, but got taken yep. away. Yep. They seem, and you've mentioned it earlier, they seem to be taking too many touches uh, when they get that space. They, uh, she had a backside run she could have hit. Our backside defender was not uh, really aware the girl was making the run. They could have found her, but they uh, held the ball too long. Liat coming in to break up the play there. See just a slight miscommunication there, and then they got it right back. Bath still with possession of ball right at the top of the 18. Have a chance here to center it up. I do not like how many open Bath players I see back there, Coach. Uh, too many, too many running free. Uh, they haven't been able to connect with him yet, but uh, I don't like seeing those girls wide open in our box. Yeah, fortunately they haven't been able to connect with the pass, but it's not because the players aren't there. Yep. Now, we just had a good example where, and I, and I love the no call, we had possession, would have been a penalty against Bath, but since we had possession, they didn't call it. It makes, it makes us crazy. When you got possession, don't get the call. And if you're new to soccer, that's tough because you might want an immediate penalty. That was a good example a moment ago where you don't want that because we've got possession. Triplet is always going to go in hard for that, and as long as she beats the girl to the ball, it's going to be just fine. Yeah, that was a great play on Triplet. Good closing speed, went hips into the player. Uh, looked like player first, but maybe she touched the ball and then player good enough for the takeaway. Yep, and uh, I know that ref over there, he uh, prefers a physical game, so uh, he's not going to call anything he doesn't have to. Is that Brian over there? Or nope, that's, uh, the that's Don. Oh, yep. yep. So he likes a WBL match, yeah. a lot of hips and oh, shoulders. Yeah. Definitely. No hands, no knees. He's, he was, he's a lot like me. He uh, has no uh, speed, uh, so he's got to rely on that body to play, so that's how he likes to ref as well. So he expects everybody might be able to play that way. Gotcha. <laughs> Bath connects with a long pass on the far side, looking for options. You see a couple players in the seams there, but not enough for Bath. Little miscommunication on Bath there, and that's just enough for riders to possibly take it away, and they do. Ludicky steps to the ball, but can't get a piece of it. Uh, you like to see your strikers try to win that ball, hold up play so your wingers and your midfielders can come up. There's a nice step. And Bath's got possession on Ryder, half of the field, looking for some options here. And again, Coach, I see the backside. I see two white jerseys and one Rough Rider. That's dangerous. Uh, a, a higher quality team is going to make the Riders pay if that's how they're going to play in the playoffs. So uh, hopefully that's something Coach gets fixed, uh, whether that's tonight or uh, over the next week for the playoffs. Checking into the game for the Rough Riders. Number five, Anchorman, comes back into the game. Number seven, Minker, returns to the game. And uh, 17, Kendall Davis, comes back into the game. We've got a throw in for the Rough Riders. Jacobs with the throw in deep into their own territory. Seth, you pointed out a minute ago that they had a two on one on the back side. And uh, I would expect the keeper uh, to help out with that. You know, he or she back there. In this case, Brackman can see the field, uh, kind of a, almost like a quarterback or a catcher position. Should be screaming her head off, yeah. calling out numbers, being very verbal. Yeah, last week Coach Peaches and I were talking about that uh, in the Elida game. 
and uh, that was one thing he he loves out of his goalkeepers. Uh, the, you know, they're uh, they're they can see everything out there, so they need to be talking. Um, and we brought up Doc Hertenstein there. I know you've had some experience with Doc. Uh, he he definitely is one that's going to talk. Uh, so hopefully Brackman's back there barking out some orders. Yeah, we may not be able to hear it, but you might be able to pick it up on uh, on the microphones on Rider Nation Station. You'll hear a lot of chatter, especially in these varsity games. And the words you're going to hear and we want to hear is things like man, touch, turn, beat him, travel, uh, space, man behind, and a lot of other chatter. And, of course, as you said from the goalie, you want to hear a lot of talk since they have a great view of the field. And you mentioned Doc. Um, he's the opposite. He's never not talking. <laughs> yeah. Yep, exactly. Brackman handles that one easily. I'm not sure if they would really count that as a shot on goal, but it was sort of towards the frame. Oof, tough touch there off the face, uh, but stays with it. Finds a great ball to the winger, and Bass got numbers running free in the box. Once again, there, Coach, I gave him credit before. They got away with it several times, but I'm kind of tired of seeing it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Running free right there through the midfield. And a little miss by the Riders' defense. Maybe just chipped it, so you saw in that Larry Schaff auto sales instant replay exactly what you're talking about. The numbers you didn't like, the seams you didn't like. Fortunately, Bath mishandled that one. Otherwise, they could have had a, a, good, a really good chance yeah. of yeah. At a, a solid shot on goal there. Yeah, to be honest, a pretty easy chance pretty easy opportunity yeah, I mean, and Brackman can only cover whatever exactly. her width is plus she can move she got 24 feet to cover and there's probably about 18 there available Bath with a really nice pass into the seam and a shot on and no touch for Brackman <clears throat> that penetration is something you don't want to see down here can be a little bit frustrating and I know we talked about does the game matter or not well maybe for uh, the, the uh, rankings the tournament's already set we'll talk about what's coming up for both teams in their tournament play but once the whistle blows you have 40 minutes and we're going to play hard those 40 minutes and we're going to play I think you would say let's play right yep. let's play proper soccer Yeah, and no, and no team wants to uh, go into playoffs with a loss um, at, in their final regular season game uh, so, you know, they definitely want to win. They definitely want to play well. Um, certainly can work on things. Certainly can get some players some different playing time. But uh, you want to have that confidence going into playoffs. And protect your keeper, as always, right? You don't. You really don't want to put – you want your keeper's board. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on him. Now, Brackman hasn't had too much, but the last two runs for Bath easily could have put some pressure on Brackman. And she was close to a hand save there that she didn't have to touch, so it turned into a goal kick. But – uh, I think we've seen enough of that. Yeah, yeah, and and confidence in a goalkeeper is huge. Uh, and as you get into playoffs, where you might have uh, PKs, um, because somebody's got to win, so you you might have PKs in a tie game. So uh, you want to want that goalkeeper to be super confident, as confident as possible. So a, a shutout for the Riders would be uh, pretty big tonight. Yeah, yeah, that's a great that's a great point. Go, going in with a loss is a momentum uh, conversation, right? And and neither of these teams wants to go into a tournament with a loss. Uh, right now, the Rough Riders have been possessing just a little bit more and uh, off the foot of free wall, got one in there. Yeah, but well, right in the last few minutes here, we've seen a lot more action on our half of the field there. Yeah, Riders a little impatient on that play there. Had had some numbers up, had a chance to possess. Got to be careful. Keep giving up opportunities. Bath continues to send four people up consistently, sometimes five, and the Riders only have four back, three back, five back. Uh, they're really not getting back defensively too much. Uh, yeah, again, for a team that uh, that is very uh, stingy on giving up goals at 1.67 average per game, they are putting a lot of pressure up front. Yeah, yeah, and you can see part of the reason why the Riders have nearly given up as many goals as they've scored uh, defensively. Just maybe uh, you, there's a lot of young people back here playing defense for the Riders. Mm -hmm. That's something for the future that's going to be great. Uh, but this season, it's been a little rough. And you got to withstand some goals against, as we said. I think Rough Riders had, what, 45-4 and uh, 40 against. So I think returning to the game or, or seeing action for Bath now, number seven, Faith Clark, entering the game. And um, I think number 26, Claire Turner, returning to the game for the Rough Riders. We've got a throw in for Bath on the near side. We've got under 10 minutes, just under 10 minutes in the uh, first half. Rough Riders still in the lead 1-0. to zero. Uh, but in the last few minutes, we have felt a shift in the field. It's as if the, the field has tipped a little bit towards Brackman, a lot more action down this way. And, and Bath may play the game that way. They may, they may change. As you said, we, we've changed our goal kicks a lot. They may be changing their attack and their defense a little bit to keep it mixed up for us. Turner working on the near side here. 
of the field looking for a centering pass doesn't make connection there bath working on the near side and that one goes out of bounds so we're going to have a check back in for the rough riders number eight lauren jacobs returns to the game for the rough riders gives a sophomore lee a break yeah, and i am noticing bath's got uh more people than I saw before kind of swarm into the ball uh, not letting the riders get much possession uh, as soon as the riders get the touch on the ball there's a there's a bath player there in their face if not another a second or a third yeah it's a it's a maybe the liken to a gang tackle in uh, football where you got six seven people in on the tackle they're sending two or three to pressure the ball and it's working for them right yep. Now. Yep. now and that's a strategy that that's leaving rough riders open if we recognize that something bath's had a hard time doing that was a quick touch if we recognize it with a quick touch we might be able to get an attack off that. Yep, and Bass been much better these last 10 minutes about connecting those passes. They've had those those chances, they've had those open players, but they weren't able to connect early, but now they have been, and it's definitely changing the game. Could have been just a player combination like we were talking about earlier. Uh, Bath going into the playoffs with, again, a game that on the record books, you don't have to win it, and uh, may have been getting some players in. Yeah, I see you pointing to the far side there. Want to uh, get out of the middle and create some space. Yeah. Riders are having some chances too. They just can't quite find that final ball. A lot of times the riders like to go through the middle. Uh, I'm usually the opposite. I like to spray it to the wings, let the wings run into that space and get a, get a switch or they can take a couple of touches inside and get a shot themselves. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, Seth. I, I'm a flag to middle guy, turn everything into a corner kick because we know with corner kicks, a lot of dangerous stuff can happen. Riders only had about one of those tonight. Bath has had two where they, uh, Riders have had two where they cross the middle. Bath a couple where they cross the middle. A lot can happen. Yep, and we just saw it again right there. We had uh, Reese Rabel run into the corner, but Turner decides to play it through the middle. Um, and unfortunately, there's um, some Bath players that went Again, Bath able to connect, finding gaps. Great Piper's going to step, step yep. yep. Great step by Triplett. This is a dangerous ball. I do not like this one. Do not like this one. Brackman does a good job backpedaling to line. She's tall. She can reach that top bar, but if you miss that timing just a little bit, yeah, now you got a ball in the back of the net that should have never been kicked that way. Yeah, and you love to see her just continue to go back and go back. You know, some players like to stand there, and then they like to jump, and they don't know where they're at. That's, that's where it gets scary. Uh, but Brackman and her experience and Coach James over here, uh, they, they've they gotten a lot of practice to that, so you can tell she knows what she's doing. You want to put them in the outfield and teach them uh, first step back. Yep, yep. Uh, so you don't get burned. Turner hustling down the sideline. Can't quite keep the ball. Ball goes out for a rough rider throw in. We got number five Anchorman returning to the game for the rough riders. And coming into the game for... The Bath Wildcats is number three, Mara Davis, and number six, Ariana Razor. And we got a throw in for the Rough Riders. Jacobs with the throw in. Jacobs connected to Rabel on that. We got the ball in the center of the field. Freewalt. Freewalt looking for Menker on the far side. Menker with a nice header into the box. Bath chooses to put it up. So they're putting it out, but they're keeping it right on the sideline. Rough Riders take it away on the far side. Looking for a, a nice, that was, could have been a nice through ball there. Uh, two Bath Wildcat ladies uh, stopped that one. We got a throw in. Rough Riders, Tomberlin on the far side with the throw in. Looking for Menker. There's that contact you were talking about, Seth. And Bath looking for a run up the middle, probably middle to the outside. Jacobs makes a nice step to her, though. Doesn't let her turn, or at least doesn't let her turn easy and find a good connection. So. Uh, love to see the adjustment. Jacobs just kind of came in, came back in the game, so uh, she might be a game changer for the Riders. Fix that last 10 minutes that we've had. Tomlin made a good move to get that ball out of bounds. Uh, number eight, uh, Cameron McGee checks in for the Wildcats and returning to the game, the freshman, number 38, Eliana Weigel, returns yep. to the game. And and if you, I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, but Bass got two uh, wide open midfielders here on this side of the field that uh, can easily get the ball, can easily uh, help build up the attack. Riders are just kind of sitting back and letting them, letting them be open, letting them be free. That last ball cleared out by Jacobs. Yeah, that there's one third of the field that the riders are kind of giving to him right now. Again, maybe it's Coach Wilson's strategy, but you don't want to see that pop ball like this one. Yep, those balls are dangerous. Uh, and Bath follows, but can't quite get it. Uh, right now, Coach, it just looks like Bath wants it ball more. Looks like they want to win more. Um, hopefully that's something the Riders can get out of this half um, with a lead, and then Coach can fix that at halftime. 
Yeah, we just talked about it a moment ago that about, about middle third, barely the middle third there, and Riders let two of the Bath midfielders sit on that and pop the ball up just off that bar. The ball's round, the bar's round. A lot can happen on that one, and Brackman can't get up that high to get a fist on that ball, or didn't on that one. Bath's still controlling it in, in uh, Rider territory. See if they turn this one into a bit of a corner kick. They do, and you're probably hearing on the speakers here coach wilson's getting very verbal uh, and i don't blame him because there's a lot of action down here too close to brackman yeah and it seems like it's pretty deliberate uh the writers are clearly giving bath space uh they're not man marking they're not playing tight uh curious to see if that stays for the second half uh, as i as i see it bath is getting good advantages because of that early on they weren't but uh lately they have been they sure are in the last few minutes All right, we got two minutes left in the first half. Rough Riders still up one to zero. Bath in control of the ball right now on the far side. Looking to connect and still connected. There's that overlapping run that you're looking for. A little bit of mishandling. Jacobs working and hard to get it up the field. Their team. Nice turn from Jacobs. Can't make looking the connection, for connection. Still working. And here comes Bath right down the middle of the field again. And they've got numbers open. They got plenty of people. Uh, backside run here if she makes a hard one, but she is not. Uh, that's twice now. Uh, Bath has not made that hard run to the backside, but they do have plenty of other options. So, Probably asking for one more there, one more pass. Fortunately for us, they didn't get now. We have our first corner kick coming up for Bath. Um, just coming up on one minute in the first half. They're, I assume they're going to take a long corner here. They're not sending anybody up short. And uh, we'll see what their strategy is here. Riders are, of course, being very verbal. Brackman's being verbal. And uh, towards the 18 with that corner kick, which is bad for them, good for us. Miscommunication Bath, by the Bath's riders there. Still, Bath still keeps connection. Now they're going to turn it into a probably a more proper corner to the backside. There's that backside run I was asking for, uh, but can't quite connect. Rough riders escaped uh, on that one, Seth. We got away with what looked like a maybe a mishit corner to the top of the 18. Miscommunication. They put it right back in the box. Uh, fortunately, turned into a goal kick for the Rough Riders. So Menker's deep in our territory on the far side, looking up the left hand of the si uh, far side of the field. Bath again controlling the ball in the middle, still controlling the ball in the middle. And another goal kick, 25 seconds left in the first half. Yeah, if you just tuned in in the last 15 minutes, you're probably surprised at the score. Uh, I don't think uh, Bath goalkeeper has touched the ball in the last 15 minutes. Um, I actually forgot her name. Uh, it's been so long. Seriously, yeah. it's been so long. So yeah. probably close to 20 minutes uh, in this half. You're right, Seth, that uh, we have not seen a lot of possession from the Rough Riders. See, and right there, ooh, ooh. So Referee a, is not supposed to stop that clock. There is no reason he has to stop that clock. I don't know, unless that is something that is brand new. Uh, that I was just going to say that is a smart foul because the girl was about to go take a shot with just a couple seconds left. We, we foul her. her. We foul her there. The clock is killed. Should have run the clock out. Now, I don't hear the coaches yelling, so I think Seth, you and I are probably playing under different rules at the younger ages right now. And that ties that it. Cost That's us. unfortunate. Well, I got to assume since the whole place wasn't screaming their heads off, Seth, that that was a uh, legitimate foul. We're going to see that on the Larry Schaff auto sales replay off the penalty. Could not put it in a better spot. Out of the reach of Brackman. Round ball, round post. Ends up in the back of net. One to one with literally no time left on the clock. So, Seth, you said it. If you watched the last 15, 20 minutes, you'd have thought we'd have been down 3-0. We really did have good possession for a while in the first half. So, so we're going to sign off here. Our technical crew is going to do a little bit of work. But uh, during the halftime, switch over, if you're on Facebook, switch over on Rider Nation Station to catch the women's volleyball action that's happening right now. We'll be back here in about 10 minutes. Albert Sporting Goods. American Legion Post 323, all glaze equipment rental. Capabilities, David Wabacher Attorney. Eagles 767, FCA, Fowler's TV, Freedom Marking Strategies, Grand Lake Roofing, 
Guaneri's Pizzeria, Jackalope Stash, Larry Schaff Auto Sales, Laura Yelton State Farm, MHS Alumni Foundation, Miller Funeral Homes, Minster Bank, Plus One Professional Real Estate, Writer Rooters, Roots Pub, St. Mary's Foundry, Sean Barnett Electrical, Spee's Chiropractic and Wellness Center, Spring Street Storage, TSC, and Varsity Lane. All right, we're back here at Rough Rider Field. We've got the uh, Lady Riders hosting the Bath Wildcats. First 40 minutes. Uh, if you had already tuned into Rider Nation Station, you'll see that the Rough Riders controlled the ball for about the first half of the first half. And then the second half, you'll hear Seth and I talking and, and griping a little bit about how much action there was down on our end. And eventually it finally cost us with literally no time on the clock. Penalty just above the 18 for the Rough Riders. Turns into a direct penalty kick. And I don't know who kicked it for Bath. Couldn't have been a more perfect yeah, ball. Yeah, great Past shot. Past our wall and out of the reach of uh, Brackman. Yeah, and the unique thing about soccer is the second that clock hits zero, okay. ball is dead. So even if that ball is in flight, as soon as that clock hits zero, it's dead. So even if it's about to go in the goal, it does not count. But in that case, the ref uh, decided that it had crossed the line before the clock hit zero. Yeah, so literally when I say no time, one second, half a second. And they had really uh, asked for the clock stop with about one second left. They added, they put three onto it. Now we're starting the second half. The Riders got a good approach. Hopefully this they're a little fired up after giving that goal up right before the half, giving up that safe lead. Uh, I'd expect them to come out ready to get back ahead. As you saw, they did just what we needed. I'm sure they had a very uh, robust talk during the halftime. Riders have really got their, their starters back into the game. Rabel with the throw in to Manker. Manker was working on the near side here. Bath mishandles it, kicks it out of bounds. We've got a throw in coming up for the Rough Riders. I am seeing a slight change in the lineup here. Uh, looks like Kelly Holsinger dropped to the midfield and maybe a Kendall Davis pushing up there to Stryker, which is something I asked for last week against Elida uh, as Davis has a bunch of speed. Uh, I'd like to see her get loose over the top if she can. Yeah, nice change up, uh, especially after the last 20 minutes of the first half. The Riders really need to do something different to get back on the uh, bad side of uh, Bath. We've seen too much of Bath's good side here in the last 20 minutes of play. Here comes Bath on the uh, near side, making a nice run, looking for a centering pass. Uh, doesn't quite connect as it gets broken up by Lady Riders. Bath back in the middle of the field here again yep. with a chance for maybe a you know, 20, 30-yard shot. Broken up by the Riders again. Good break up by Freewald up to Manker. Manker with a great foot skill. And Ryder's going to try the outside attack here to Rabel. Lots of contact as we expected, Seth, in a WBL match. Rabel seeing Manker. Can't quite connect. Uh, the Riders are looking for some good chances. They've got some good ideas, but can't quite connect them. Bath gets a wide open pass to the corner here. See if she puts it to the backside. And she does. Great runs. Bath player gets a poke on it, but not enough, and Brackman makes an easy save. Boy, just the missed foot there. Otherwise, uh, they had plenty of net to work around Brackman if they needed to, and Brackman did a great job holding their ground, but a lot of bad stuff could have happened there. And Rabel gets a good run here. The Riders got some options. Manker in the middle. Lucky bounce to her. She's going to take advantage. Don't see too many players. Um, chase down Manker and get the ball back from her. So pretty rare. Yeah, and that's a uh, pretty pretty good speed there to see from Beth's defender. Luckily for her, unfortunate for the Riders. 
Yeah, number seven, Faith uh, Clark, or may have been number nine, uh, Hale, that took that ball. Yeah, that yep. leaned on Menker and took that ball away. Yeah, and she's not a very big girl either. No. So <laughs> for her to for her to use yep. use what she's got, uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, the, the Pete Rose of soccer back here using whatever <laughs> she whatever tool she's got. But certainly, I caught Menker and then leaned on her and took that away. That's that's a that's a, a, a bit of a win right there for Bath. So we're gonna have to come with a different angle. We got a throw in coming up for Bath, and the clock's. Stopped. And maybe, maybe some injury. blood. Potential blood, I bloody nose. So, yeah. Yep, I'd say so. Some sort of injury. Yep. So uh Jacobs is gonna break here, get a break here for a moment and get checked out uh by our our excellent trainer Molly. And um that gives a chance for Caitlin Leah to return to the game. And we yep. got a throw in for And that. it was a it was a bloody nose there, folks, in case you're wondering. That was a good eye. Rabel kicked that ball out of bounds, throw in Bath. Tomberlin took it away, back up to Bath, mishandled. Riders can't quite get possession to build up. Bath's going to try into the corner here, see if they handle it and get it centered up. A couple extra touches there. In that case, might have worked out well for him. Taken away by Rough Riders. Taken back away by Bath. That's Hol some good contact right there. Yep, Holsinger's trying to win it back, getting physical, but uh, the Bath, Bath player is pretty strong there. Free wall to Manker. Trying to build it up. They've got some options. Now we need a run to this corner. Manker's starting to make it. See if she can play her. Uh, can't quite get the ball out there. Tried to talk her into it. Then Hale steps up and takes that away. Rough Riders are looking to control the middle of the field there. Rabel steps up. Now we got Manker looking at a possible opportunity on the near side. And throw in Rough Riders. Manker with the throw in. Check that. Last touch might have been off of Manker. She tried. It's one of those where you tried to steal the throw in. You hope that the ref didn't quite see it, so he's willing to let it go. Just see what happens. Gonzalez with the throw in for Bath. Manker looking in the middle of the field for Freewalt. Freewalt with a lot of contact in the middle of the field. The referees left to go. Determined it was probably direction of ball. Now Bath's got a chance for a counterattack. Bath is very good at running away from the defender. You see it time and time again in that last 20 minutes of the first half in the first first five, ten minutes here so far. Five minutes. It's a very dangerous ball there. Very dangerous ball there. Brackman with a really nice save. And, and Rough Riders keep it in, not just don't turn it into a corner kick, but a throw in for Bath. Yeah, good clear from Triplet there, uh, but the Riders sh probably should not be giving up those kind of opportunities time and time again. Uh, Bath will get another one. They showed us in the first half that they can be dangerous. If we keep leaving them with that ball above the 18, and you made a great uh, point there a moment ago, Seth, is the way the defenders, the uh, Bath defenders are running away. They're taking an angle away from the Rough Riders. We're taking maybe a straight defensive line, and they're, they're, they're creating space by doing so. Yep. Now, I mentioned in the first half how I was impressed with the Riders uh, mixing up their goal kicks, uh, but at this point they've gone uh, three or four straight goal kicks where they've just played it long. Uh, and they still have the two defenders sent back there. If they're, if they're just going to decide to go long the whole time, uh, I'm going to get those two defenders out of there so they can step uh, to any shots if Bath wins the ball. I do get the call here. They're, they're, Bath was asking for that call against Maker. I think the referees were checking on uh, who had possession, and now we've got a direct kick coming up off the penalty. And this is a similar spot from the end of the first half where the uh, Wildcats scored, so we'll see if I expect a shot. She keeps this one low. Uh, Riders are able to defend it pretty easily. So I think that was Clark, probably the same one that uh, shot it in the first half and, and again made that goal off of a direct kick off from a penalty from the Rough Riders. Throw in Bath on the far side. And there's uh, Liette to grab that ball, take it away. Last touch off of Bath. Now we got to throw in Rough Riders. See if we can mount an attack here, Seth. Start her in, in the middle of the Davis field. Davis is to the right. Put her in. Manker doesn't Manker see looking. it. The whole reason you move Davis up there is to use her speed, so they got to look for her first. I know Rabel's a good player over here, but uh, the whole point of Davis moving there and changing is to, that position, right? As take, you said. Yep, yep. And so that's got to be something that Sophie's got to have in the back of her head. Go to Davis as much as possible. Don't force it there, but uh, definitely as many times as she can. And try to get it there quickly. Yep. And, and Menker was trying to use the you know, left foot. In her case, that's her strong foot. Just couldn't get it off the off the bat player's foot to get a clear pass. Pass. 
we got a throw in for uh, Bath. Short throw in. Looking at the middle of the field again, bringing it right through the 18. We got a through ball into the box. Goal Bath. All right, we're going to check that on the Rider Nation. I'm sorry, on the Larry Schaff Auto Sales Instant Replay. Perfect through ball, splits the defenders, and really didn't, Brackman did not have a chance at And you'll notice the white, the girl that scores breaks away from her man, pops wide a little bit, creates that just a little bit of space so her, her teammate can put the ball just in front of her. Just Great movement off the do. ball from the Bath Wildcats. And I'm going to assume, you know, good referee down there that the Wildcat with onside, that was probably really close, and they timed that run perfectly. That's a great through ball. I hate to say it against our team, mm -hmm. but they timed that through ball perfectly. All right, let's see how the Rough Riders respond. Um, Bath certainly has uh, really owned the last uh, 20 minutes of this game, um, including the uh, first eight minutes of the second half. Too much uh, Bath ownership here, so let's see if the Rough Riders respond quickly. Bath on the far side is is mounting an attack again with a nice overlapping run. They have a nice run to the back post here, uh, but unfortunately it was it out of bounds. Yep, yep, yep. We had Liad there to break it up. She, it was a two-on-one that Liad had to manage, and she did put enough pressure on him where Bath coughed that one up. Rough Riders working on the far side, and Bath takes another takeaway right in the middle of the field. Now Rough we need Riders to connect this next patient. pass, and then we need to put the ball into space for us to run on to exactly like that. Hopefully Rabel can chase it down. Need some support here. She's all by herself with about four bath girls around her. She beats one, but it's hard to beat more than one. Luckily, Bath knocks that out for a corner. Uh, rough Riders should be a rough rider corner. Hopefully kick. can take advantage. Very good. Um, this is our first corner of the night, Seth. Uh, bath had one in the first half. This will be our first one coming in the second half of the game. and. Let's see how they play it. I'm, I'm hoping for a long ball here for some confusion. See if Rabel puts one right on frame. Yep, now Tomerlin's presence here on our side is pulling defender out, so that's a smart play to go into the box. Yeah, Riders, made, it, made him think it might be a short corner yep. and freed up a little space. Ryder's still working down here in Bath territory. Back to the foot of Rabel and cleared out by Bath. Yeah, and that's something I always tell my players. If Even if you don't get the ball, you still have an effect on the play. You drew somebody out of position. You can pull somebody away. We've got a throw-in coming up for the Rough Riders. Prior to the throw-in, checking back into the game, the freshman, Eliana Weigel. And we've got a throw-in uh, in the hands of uh, Tomberlin. Tomberlin looking for Menker. Rough Riders keeping possession of it. Ooh, Keeper doesn't have a chance to come out and get it. That's a close one. That's one of those, if it's in the middle of the field, you're probably seeing a foul call there. Uh, but because it's in the box, unfortunately, refs don't like to make that decision unless it's very really obvious. obvious yeah. Yeah. Probably a lot, enough traffic in there uh, makes up, makes you leave that one. But if it was one-on-one, -on -one, that would I think that would have been a call. Nope. Liet clears it out on the far side, throwing coming up for Bath. And Bath is setting up, and you see him starting to spread already. So returning to the game for the Rough Riders, you got number two, Jillian Jacobs, and a handful of Lady Wildcats return to the game. Right before that throw, and you could already see before the che before the players checked in, Seth, we saw Bath starting to use that. You'll hear coaches yell space. Um, I've heard you say it. You'll hear me say it. Start to change that and use your space on the field. Right now, Bath is using their space very well. And Rough Riders just need to get back into that um, possession and control get those passes start connecting one two three four five passes and build on a higher pass percentage yeah i'd love to see them uh, knock the ball around in the midfield a few passes so they get a good look at what their uh, wingers and strikers are doing and um, i think the way we're gonna have to beat bath is probably not a build up but uh, instead of a, a long ball um, into the gap or over the top so uh, and the Rough Riders uh, pulled out Davis, but put some more speed right there at the top in the middle uh, with Weigel. So there's, I, I think that's what they're looking to do. They just haven't been able to do it yet. Right now is a good chance if Freewalt can get some space. But unfortunately, the bat defender pushes her out wide. Good ball right there. Really nice play. A little extracurricular. Yeah, Freewalt's not going to be too happy with that. Uh, look to see her uh, get real physical at her next chance here. Hopefully she's got a second to cool down so she doesn't... Uh, draw a silly foul. I'm glad that the referees caught that because it was so far off the ball um, and they were and they, they were able to see that. with with the, Again, with a two-person crew, two-man crew, we've talked about before, typical in the regular season, the referees could have been watching the ball and missed that extracurricular. Yeah, exactly. 
Manker working on the far side. Really nice foot skills, looking for Freewalt, looking at an overlapping run. Freewalt with a nice turn. And you'll notice Bath is not giving the, our midfield any breathing room. They are swarming to the ball, uh, getting early contact. That way the riders can't pick their head up and find that ball through or uh, through the gaps or over the top. And I think uh, Bath probably watching films and knowing the Rough Riders, what they're doing right now is they're putting a whole bunch of people on Freewalt. And uh, they're uh, making her crazy there by putting two or three in a lot of contact. I think they're pushing the contact, yep. probably coached to do so. Yep. Uh, and all that simply means is we're just going to need somebody else to step up. So, you know, Rabel's going to have to step up. The yep. freshman Weigel's going to have to step up and take um, – as. They're keeping a couple of defenders busy on uh, Freewalt. That means we're going to have to step yeah, up with somebody exactly. else. Exactly. Uh, that means if, if they're putting pressure on her, that means somebody else is open. Somebody else is She's open. She's got to find her. Return of the game for the um, Wildcats is number eight, McGee. And coming into the game for the Rough Riders, number 17, Kendall Davis. And Riley Anderson. And Riley Anderson came in. Thanks, Seth. Boy, nice throw into the box. And wide of the frame. That throw-in was uncontested uh, deeper into our box. And yeah, you don't want to see that too often. Nope, and no offsides on the throw-in, which means you can set up on the keeper. Okay, so Bath does not push quite as high on that one. So the Riders play short. Smart decision. And, uh, a, different, but, and a different look. Yep, but still can't get it out of the back. Yep, ended up out. Probably better to defend a throw-in than those deep balls that Definitely. we've been seeing down there. And I think, uh, I'm sure Coach Wilson has got a, got an answer for this, working on an answer. Enough of the 30, 40-yard shots off a of bath. And maybe they made a living on that this year. Yep, looking to do it again here, if she can get some space. She's a strong girl, so she can do just about whatever she wants when she has that ball on her foot. She knows how to use her body. She knows how to shield the ball. Um, Riders just got to be patient, just stay in front of her. Yeah, you're talking about Clark for Bath. She is uh, strong, aggressive, and fast. Yeah. Great foot skills. I mean, a lot of tools in that girl's toolbox, and she's using every one of them against the Rough Riders tonight. She's used a left foot a lot. Now you see a really nice right foot pass from Clark deep into Rough Rider territory. Centering ball, unfortunately a chance for Bath, and a great save by Brackman. Yep. That is number seven or eight for Brackman. Yeah, yeah, and Brackman doing a nice job to keep the Riders in it. Uh, defense is letting her down a little bit. Uh, you don't want to see a defender on the outside went in kind of to make contact with the man on that last play uh, and missed. Nice takeaway there by, I think, Triplet. Maybe not. A little hard to see from this far away. Yeah, but can't connect it, so Bath wins the ball back. Riders are having a hard time winning the ball in the midfield. Yep, and there, who's there in the middle? Clark. Number seven, Clark, for the Wildcats. Wildcats controlling the ball in the middle of the field again, still controlling the ball in the middle field, looking for an option to the outside, and they've got it. It's going to be another centering pass. Backside, no Wildcats there yet, fortunately, and a goal kick for the Rough Riders. Yep. This is when, uh, Seth, if you've, uh, if you've never coached a motion sport like hockey or soccer, you don't understand, it's a good time for a timeout. Yeah, yeah, Unfortunately, exactly. You don't get you don't get one of those. So yeah, and that's one of the one of the, on the beautiful things about soccer. Uh, you can't stop. Uh, you can't go to a commercial break. You can't do any of that stuff. Uh, but when your team's playing like the Riders are tonight, and and Bath's playing tonight, uh, you just desperately want something to happen to where you can just take a break, talk to the talk to the girls, and and get some things straightened out because right now Bath is outplaying the Riders. They they've got us by possessions in this half for sure. And, uh, and I think a little more heart right now. They just they want it a little more than the Rough Riders do. And they're coming in behind the Rough Riders in the WBL. Just a reminder, the Rough Riders are tied for fourth. And I think Bath enters this game six for the WBL. But, boy, these two teams are very evenly matched tonight. Yeah, it's been a little bit back and forth. Riders controlled for a while. Bath's controlled um, for the last, um, really, the last probably 30 minutes of the game. So you want to see the Riders flip that switch and get back to, uh, to what we started with. So during that break, uh, Hayden O'Donnell checks back in, and as you're checking your scoreboard, you can see, I mean, it's 2-1 to one Wildcats, but the story here is 13 shots on goal from the Wildcats and only one shot on goal for the Rough Riders. Going to have to find a way to change the attack and get some shots on goal, even if they're far shots. Just check the keeper out. Yeah, yeah. and again right there you can see the Riders just can't. The, the Wildcats are swarming to the ball. There's a rare chance that we have in the midfield. With a nice overlapping pass. Possible one more to Menker. Need one more pass. Get Davis to the left. Menker's going to take the there shot. There it is. That's what we're looking for. Everybody on sides. Beautiful turn of the ball. 
Manker finishes it up just like we expect her to. We'll check this on the Larry Schaff Auto Sales instant replay. Manker finds a way between two defenders, and that left foot of hers is just too strong for Bat to overcome. We'll watch it one more time here. A little misplay by the Wildcats. Manker gets just enough space to squeeze that ball through, buries it hard to the back. And the let's back. remember how that got there. We had space in the midfield. Kendall Davis wins the ball, and she finally has space to turn, pick her head up, and find a combination. And we do a couple one-twos up the field and eventually find Manker. And and the Riders have that ability. They The Bath has just been taking it away this half. Uh, but uh, finally, the Riders are able to get some space and breathing room in there. I think the key is going to be uh, probably what Wilson talked to him about halftime and as they're subbing off the field, make it a really quick touch and release it because we're getting swarmed. Bath's closing speed on us is very quick tonight. So the Rough Riders respond with uh, just under 25 minutes in the game with a goal off the left foot of Manker. And as Seth Hurton's team pointed out, where'd that goal happen? Happened in the middle of the field when the Rough Riders created space and then finally used that space. Hopefully that ignites uh, the Riders a little bit. Gets him uh, to create a couple more chances here. Brackman comes out smartly, probably nice and loud back there, letting our de defenders know. Yeah, we can't hear it from here, but hopefully the crowd heard it, maybe picked it up on the Rider Nation station broadcast. She's screaming, keep her back there, so the defenders know to leave that ball and not uh, accidentally deflect it into the net. Oh, and there was another one. Uh, Menker had a little bit of time and a little bit of space, but pr a, lot of, a lot of pressure. She didn't have too much time to find a connection. Oh, we got a little bit of a miss hit from the Rough Riders. Turns into an opportunity for Bath. Fortunately, she doesn't turn it up. She just goes straight into the hands of Brackman. Brackman has got really sure hands tonight. And uh, I'd like to say, uh, you know, I guess we'll comment hopefully eventually on what does the Bath keeper have? Can't tell. <laughs> just hasn't had that much her way yet. Yep. Need a little Rough Rider push here to keep it down. Uh, but unfortunately, one rider going to the ball. Uh, but it does go out for the rider throw in. All right, so we've got a throw-in coming up for the Rough Riders, and it's going to be uh, on the check-in. Caitlin Clark, or, or I'm sorry, Caitlin Liet. <laughs> Caitlin Clark. <laughs> Caitlin Liet. <laughs> yeah, Rough Riders, not Iowa. Liet returns to the game and takes a throw-in. Menker looking to s put that ball near frame. And again, she's got time to pick her head up and make a decision. Take a peek. Take a peek because they're starting to find some space here. Sh a little mishandled there by the Rough Riders, but we got Liet coming up to the ball quickly. And takes a look. Would have liked to have seen a pass to the middle of the field there off of Liet, but I guess it's better than a run for Bath. Now Bath puts a really nice deep through ball. You got Triplet down there uh, taking her time, thinking about what she wants to do, and takes it away instead of just kicking it, working it on the near side to Rabel. Now Rabel's going to make a nice turn Good on the turn. near side, and that's what we want to see, a little bit of space there. Might have rolled, Manker might have rolled her ankle over here. Hopefully she's okay, but she is down. All right, um, look at a rough rider possession and see if, well, we're going to keep it. So Freewalt's working the ball down the middle of the field. And uh, Rabel working on the near side. Rabel with an opportunity. Takes the opportunity on the short side. Into the hands of the goalie. And because uh, no longer is there an advantage for the riders, they're going to stop the clock and check out Manker. Um, definitely... Definitely, uh, instantly, she did not feel good. So whether it was an ankle, um, knee, hip, uh, I think I think Molly Rindler's down there looking at her ankle, though. So, so we'll get a short break here for from the broadcast for an injury. Just wanted to uh, share a thank you for the uh, Rider Nation crew here tonight. We got Carter Fisher and uh, Rhett Chisholm on the cameras doing a great job of following the action and of course our technical director Logan Yelton is always running the controls these guys are doing an excellent job uh, they do the best they can with the talent that you're given from Seth and I <laughs> and uh, they make us look good yeah sorry fellas all right we'll have a drop ball to the keeper here she can pick that up if she wants she can keep it on the ground if she wants it's really her choice so we got just uh, over 20 minutes left in the second half Two to two tie. Scoreboard definitely not telling the story of the game tonight. And if you're just tuning in now, the Rough Riders controlled the first half of the first half. Beth really had been in control since then. Rough Riders finally changed their angle of attack and gave uh, Menker a chance to tie up the game. And one thing we're still seeing is Bath has, and you can you can see it as you watch this. They are uh, frustrating Freewald, and they're putting two to three girls on her. So hopefully Riders will be able to take advantage of that because it's going to free up some other players. 
Yeah, and you'll notice how quick Bath is stepping to the ball. They are not letting the Riders have anything. They're going to make everything difficult, not just for free ball, especially for free ball, but not just <laughs> for free ball. Um, so every time the Riders get the ball, you, you definitely see a white shirt flying at them. One thing that uh, Bath has done tonight, and, and some teams do this, some teams don't, we're not keeping a good track of it. They are subbing like crazy, three or four at a time, getting fresh legs, and I'm sure the coach is saying, quick the ball, step the ball, just break it up. And if you've done that, you've done your job. Get exactly. that win. Yep. And, ma- and maybe choosing not to put the best feet on the field, best talent on the field the whole time, but fresh. Yeah. And the writers here sitting back, letting Bath do, uh, well, Ava Price, it looks like. Is that Ava Price over there? Uh, that uh, is, yeah. Putting in the work. Uh, no, uh, that was Ludicky. Okay, Ludicky. Ludicky, number nine, and not just put in the work, but really nice contact there to take the ball away. So we got Rammel working the ball on the near side. Liette calling for the ball. She gets it, gets what she wants. Look back at that overlap and run back to Rammel. Just what we've been looking for. It unfortunately goes out of bounds, but that's a great combination. Like you said, what we're looking for. Uh, when the riders have chances to do that, that's when they're dangerous. We saw it against Elida. Uh, we saw it uh, just a few minutes ago with Maker's goal. Kendall Davis working for the ball. Nice Riley challenge. chases it down. She's got an option up top if she can find, but she can't quite see Davis. Still closing speed on the ball very quickly. Liette's got the first touch here, and she's going to work against uh, Lady Wildcat. Nice drop to our back. Triplet. Triplet's looking for options on the far side of the field. Still got him with free wall. Ooh, that header allows no worries for offsides for us once they touch it, but into the hands of the keeper. I think their keeper probably would have rather just no touch there because yeah. as soon as that header comes, if their defense is moving up to the ball, there's no offsides for us. Yeah, and that's a hard decision as a defender to make. Do you know? Do you, you, you can get a piece of it, but do you want to? Do you leave it or not? And you really expect your keeper to start screaming our head off. We got a trip from behind and didn't really have advantage for a moment, but got the advantage now. So we're going to have a direct kick off the penalty from Bath and uh, Rabel with the direct kick. Popped up kick, coming deep into the territory. Dangerous. Dangerous, two touch. Well, that's what you love to see from the Riders though, crashing on the goalie. We had two girls on her, uh, making her life difficult. Uh, you can tell the Riders want this game. Yeah, it's changed completely here now, Seth. Yeah, Ludicky came in hot on that one, and Davis came in hot on that one. Yeah, and Ludicky just came in for a few minutes, but she was a spark plug. That's what you want to see from your bench. Uh, players coming in, working their butt off, doing their job, and even if they're out there two, three minutes, uh, working their butt off that whole time. That's and an she important did that. two or three minutes, and uh, she did just, just that. Yep, and I think that's one of my favorite things about high school soccer. You know, it's not, you know, college, you're limited on your subs. Professional, you're definitely limited on your subs. Uh, and so in high school, you know, being able to sub in and out every couple minutes is a great thing, uh, especially for those, the girls that just want to get out here and play. Yeah, on a night like tonight, a beautiful night, senior night. we got the band here tonight. Stands are full. Uh, great WBL matchup. And you've got your two minutes or 90 seconds, whatever it is, to show the coach what you got. Not, I think we had a penalty there, and I'm not sure why uh, it's taking so long to get the uh, kickoff. Clock is still running. Uh, we had a penalty against the Rough Riders. And just a moment ago, checking in for the Rough Riders, uh, back into the game, number five, Anchorman returned to the game, and uh, number 36, uh, Anderson, back in the game. Here's Freewall coming down the middle of the field, checking her options. Of course, who's there giving her a heck of a time, as always, number seven, uh, Clark with the Lady Wildcats. Yep, and, and Free Waltz, uh, she needs a little bit of help. She's holding the ball quite a while, so she's she's kind of giving herself her some problems. But part of that is because uh, she doesn't have too many options to find passes. And she's used to being able to do that. Exactly. Generally, uh, Free Walt owns the middle of the field, yep. right? I mean, get get the ball to Free Walt. Now she's looking at your the rest of your attackers. But tonight, Bath's kind of got her number. Yep. So we'll see if they make a change here. Bath's making a nice run deep into Rough Rider territory. Good broken up by the Riders, Freewalt. but left just over the top of the 18. Uh, we don't want to see that at all. If we can help it now with a goal kick, we'll have a couple of Rough Riders um, checking in. So number two, Jacobs, returning to the game. And number 12, Tomberlin, also returning to the game. Gives Caitlin uh, Liette um, a break and also Riley Anderson a break. And uh, this is one of those decisions. We just saw Manker go down with an injury. Uh, we just saw her get taped up here. It looks like she's prepared to go back into the game. This is one of those tough calls as a coach. You know, this game doesn't mean a whole lot. Oh, the Riders will come back. Really that. nice opportunity here for Weigel. Got that ball taken away. 
Um, but anyway, back to Manker. It's it's one of those tough decisions as a coach. Uh, do you put her back in uh, and try to win the game? Because, you know, the confidence you're going to have from winning the game, the momentum, you know, the mentality that you might develop from that win, you know, could could be great for the playoffs. But you're also putting her at risk if you put her back on the field. She could further aggravate that, set her timeline back a little bit. It's a tough decision by a coach. That's why they get paid the big bucks. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, the Riders got their first tournament game coming up on October 16th, so there's a little bit of time there. But, Seth, it's a, it's a dilemma. Uh, what do you do here? You, you, Manker's a senior, uh, junior. Uh, no, I'm sorry, senior. Very important player for the uh, Rough Riders and uh, ju- junior. Yeah. Uh, very important player for the Rough Riders. Giving them what they need. Got the last goal. She's probably squealing to get into this mm-hmm. game. And Coach Wilson has to make a decision. Is it worth it? What if you take the chance and she's not – uh, available for that playoff game or the tournament games or what if you lo- lose this game and it takes off your momentum a little yeah, bit so. th- th- yeah this is one of those where you don't ask the player because the player's going to say yes every time yeah i'm good coach put me in um uh, especially sophie uh but um uh, that's a yeah tough decision from coach he'll probably watch as she warms up see how she looks see if he trust how that ankle's looking in a run Fortunately, we got uh, Molly Rindler here, excellent trainer, takes such good care of our athletes, very experienced now, be able to help Coach Wilson out with the assessment of uh, Manker. Riders are battling. Uh, like we said, they flipped a switch after that goal. They definitely want this game. Kind of a collision there. Luckily, nothing, nothing negative came out of it. Yeah, both uh, going in direction of the ball. As you said, free wall, a little frustrations, making some really nice contact. Good takeaway there by Jacobs, great foot skills. Got a Rough Rider throw in coming up prior to the throw in, return of the game for the Rough Riders. Rabel's coming back into the game, and uh, Turner, number 26, coming in for the game. And returning to the game for the Lady Wildcats, number 21, Gonzalez. Well, the Riders have definitely shown some spark here in the last few minutes. Seth, certainly the goal from uh, Manker gave them the energy that they needed. And just as a reminder, the Rough Riders have lost two games coming into this um, two in a row. Their last win, I think, was um, uh, against Kenton uh, on September 26th. So, y- you know, you had what you were talking about, Seth, is is you really you want to go into the tournament with a win, but you don't want to go in with three losses in a row yeah, either. And that's, yep. that might be weighing a little bit on the Lady Riders and on Coach Wilson as well right now. Yeah, and uh, the Riders' first-round opponent, uh, you don't want to overlook anybody, uh, but Napoleon is their first-round opponent, and Napoleon's only won one game on the season. Um, so good chance it'll be an easy win, but uh, you never want to just assume. You never know what's going to happen, the weather. Uh, you know, funny things happen in, in playoff games. I've seen a lot of crazy things, so you don't want to count on that. So you, you want to go into it confident, like you said. Yeah, they'll be back here at Rough Rider Field uh, on the 16th to host Napoleon and Great Point. Napoleon's uh, coming in off of a pretty rough record. We don't know everything about their schedule and who they played, but in the tournament, anything can happen. Deep ball by the Wildcats. Tomberlin there to handle it and slow it down, protecting the sideline right now. And a drop to uh, Lady Wildcats, centers it up. This is where we don't want to see the ball. You'll hear a lot of verbals coming from the Lady Riders, from the coach. As well, last touch. Now we got a throw in coming up for Rabel. Throw in Rabel looking at Weigel. Weigel looking to use her speed. Pat's got an open man on the wing here. Makes a run. We'll see what kind of ball she gets in. Got uh, Bat does have options in the midfield, uh, but they can't connect them. Yeah, I think we're still seeing that odd formation by the Rough Riders leaving uh, one or two Wildcats middle and uh, o- o- available in that midfield. And right there you see the striker open right on top of the box. Doesn't get a good touch on it, but she did have some time, did have some space if she wanted. Well, we don't want to see it available there at all if we can help it. Yep, Clark working again for the Wildcats in the middle of the field. Clark really owns the middle of the field. And, yeah. and maybe she's been doing that all year, but tonight... 
Uh, maybe she's having the game of her life, but she's had a lot of good possessions, a lot of takeaways. Yeah, I'd, I'd expect her to get some WBL, WBL honors this year, just the way we've seen her play tonight. I, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Freewald is able to poke that one away. The Riders got a chance if they can find the space, but they can't. We don't have anybody high on this back line um, ready to run for those balls. So. Well, and Weigel's the one. The freshman Weigel's the one we've been waiting on to just get some space and break through it. Right. Riders got a possible run here. Ball's in the air, 50-50 ball. Rabel getting deep into the territory. Wildcats get out of that one. Warren Jacobs makes a nice step Excellent up. Excellent step from Jacobs. Free Walt there to clean it up, taking a look at her options. She has been having a hard time connecting with bit. the pass pressure, but she is able to connect that one with Turner, I think, on the wing. Plays a great She's ball in. Centering it up. Bath got, gets out of that one, but not cleanly. Not cleanly. Jacobs steps up, steps up to another ball. Tomberlin now working the middle of the field. And the Riders do have to be careful if Bath gets the ball. They have numbers up. They have a 3v2 here. The Riders need to drop a little bit, and Tomberlin does, thankfully. Really nice turn. Should foul. Should be our Good. ball should be, a should be a direct here on the penalty. A couple of Rough Riders anxiously waiting to get into the game, but they're going to have to wait. No substitutions on a direct kick. So Freewall's going to take this one. I'm, I'm assuming, hoping, Seth, that she's going to put this one on net, and let's see if we can get something here. Yeah, you want to see we're on frame. Somebody get a flick on it like oh, Holsinger almost Very had. Close. Uh, Very close. It was a great close. ball, great look, great run from Holsinger. Seth, I like that better, bouncing it, than putting it all the way to the frame. That'd be too easy for the keeper. Any deflection there off of Holsinger, that's going to be a goal. Yep, and as you know, as the night goes on, uh, you get it, the grass gets a little dewy, so you get that little bit of skip in there. And yeah, you can always get a touch on that. Just enough to get a touch. Centering pass to Freewalt. Freewalt working the, the mid third of the field there. Tomberlin stepping up to the ball, looking for a takeaway. Ooh, bad place to give up a foul, unfortunate. Tangle feet there uh, is another dangerous spot for Clark. She's probably gonna have another shot. See the replay here where Tomberlin gets just into the feet after the ball's gone, so now we got a uh, penalty kick. Another high one. Right into That's the back of the pretty net. similar to how she scored uh, at the end of the first half. Uh, nice high floating ball there that Brackman can't quite get to. So here on the Larry Chef auto sales instant replay, you see just out of the reach of Brackman. Brackman's timing was really good on that. We're going to see that one again. So this direct kick comes as a result of a penalty from the Rough Riders and uh, perfectly placed ball. Yeah, you don't get much better than that. That's that's not a lucky shot, that's a that's a good shot right there. So I don't know what Clark's been doing all year to your point, Seth, but uh, I assume she's been doing this to, to a lot of teams. So just under eight minutes, the Rough Riders are now down three to two, and the Rough Riders really have had, uh, really cleaned it up in the uh, second half here, and uh, got some much better possessions, much better overlapping runs, but that uh, penalty uh, into the direct kicks has really cost us twice now. Um, tonight. Yeah, and the, and the interesting thing is, uh, as we've talked about, Freewalt and our midfield is a pretty solid player. Um, so you be curious to see how great Clark plays against you know a weak midfield. Um, she probably lighten up some teams. Uh, and tonight she's been able to do some things, uh, but Freewalt's been able to keep her limited for the most part. But when the Riders give up those free kicks, uh, there's not much we can do. And then Bath's going to be hosting uh, Van Wert. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we've all seen what Van Wert's been doing this year. So uh, same day that we'll be hosting Napoleon here at Rough Rider Field, Bath's got Van Wert. So they're probably figuring, uh, you know, pull this game off if they can. That's three in a row. And then uh, go after Van Wert for maybe four in a row. And yeah. Bath goes into the playoffs with a lot of momentum. Yeah, and that's exactly what we were hoping for the Riders tonight. To get some um, momentum. So good for Bath. Uh, unfortunate for the Riders, uh, unless they're able to pull this one back. Uh, but Bass probably going to look to kind of kill the clock every moment they get to here. Um, they're not going to be too eager to go forward. They'll certainly put the ball into space to to kill some time. But uh, if they have a chance to possess, they'll do that as well. A little chance here is a miss. Great combination there. Great little um, touch to her uh, teammate there. That's a, I love to see that combination. Got a replay coming up on this where uh, just beats that one defender, drops it back to her teammate. And, uh, boy, she had a couple options there. High to Brackman was definitely not the good choice on that one. She could have gone into either corner. That was a really great play, good communication. 
Uh, there's an example, Seth, of what you were talking about earlier. A couple players playing, playing together so long, uh, silent, right? Yep. Not probably a nonverbal, just knew her teammate was there. Yeah, and you can tell you can tell Bats uh, works on some combination plays. They're constantly moving off the ball. They're constantly looking for that extra pass, something that you and I always love to hear, love to see. Um, and movement without the ball yes. is really important. Now here's a chance for the Rough Riders. I like this, Seth, because and the keeper goes flying. Has not been up. The keeper has not been very aggressive. Hasn't had to be. So that was a really nice open field there. Yep, and that's the ball we've we've been waiting on the Riders to play all night uh, in the second half. They finally were able to get one in there, but unfortunately Weigel wasn't high. Uh, I like my striker to stay high on that back line. That way when that ball's in, she can just run past him because you could tell right past she him. was the fastest player out there. She looked like Usain Bolt running against a bunch of amateurs. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the bath um, defender had a head start on her, though. Yeah, just a little bit of a head start. We've seen... Uh Number nine, I think, Hale for Bath, just having a really great night tonight. Uh, similar player to uh, Weigel, fast, um, athletic, and she's super aggressive. Uh, shot wide of the frame there, but handled by uh, Brackman. A little too much action down here on the rough rider end of the field. Four minutes, 37 seconds left, and uh, the rough riders need to respond to that third goal. Another shot opportunity for Bath. Triplet steps in front of the shot. Freewalt's not giving up that space in the middle. No, you knew there was going to be contact there between Clark and uh, Freewalt. Very nice step by Jacobs, looking for some options. That's that option we've been looking for, just a little bit wide. Rough Riders are going to have to come with a lot of energy in the last few minutes. At this point, got to get a quick one and then try to get one more to, uh, to finish this game off. Yep, and again, I'd love to see us push one of our players, especially Weigel, up to that final uh, Bath defender, that way we can really play that ball into the space for her. And Bath isn't playing exactly a flat bath line, back line, so when you talk about the last defender, not her defender, find that shoulder-to-shoulder yeah. shoulder with the last one, see if you can get in that seam. If Weigel gets a step on him, she's gone. Yep. We have not seen a one-on-one -on -one with Bath's keeper yet tonight. I don't know what will happen if we if we see one. So we got a couple of subs coming in for the game for uh, Bath. Uh, we got uh, Rex, number 16, and uh, Core, number 17. And then um, see in action for the first time tonight for the Rough Riders, uh, number three, Bella Hurtenstein, checking into the game. She's a sophomore. That gives uh, Turner uh, a break. And uh, we'll see if the Rough Riders can. Uh, you hear a little bit of yelling right now. You got to want it. And that's exactly what everybody should be saying. What do you got here? Show us what you got on senior night here at Rough Rider Field. Bath still in control of the ball here, deep in Rough Rider territory. Free Walt. Pushing that ball up a little bit. Love to see a good through ball here, but can't quite get close, it over the top. Close to a through ball. And the the way the Riders are playing tonight, uh, without Maker on the field, that's about the only thing they're going to be able to get for the rest of this game. So, yeah, let's get that. They got to get that through ball. It was really close. Another chance right here. Uh, Rabel running onto it. Bath's probably going to clear it out. Doesn't clear it out, which is good for us. See if we can pick this ball up here on the sidelines. Great hustle from Rabel, but she doesn't quite have the speed that Weigel has, so she can't get to it. Yep, couldn't quite beat the corner. Bath's uh, backs are very athletic and, and running fast tonight. And and Bath, Bath's uh, winger did not get that ball there, but uh, it was a great run. She ran outside to draw the defender wide, and then she cut in behind her, mm -hmm. so she had plenty of space in the middle. It was a great run. The same things we've seen Bath doing all night. Bath in control of the game. We're coming up on two minutes in the uh, second half, and Rough Riders got to get everything they can do here. Uh, to get that energy on the field. We're going to have several. Uh, Coaches putting the seniors back in. Several riders checking back in. Great way to end the night for them. Unfortunately, it's not going to result in a uh, victory for the riders most likely. Uh, but for the seniors, good way to end their season. Never know what their kind of time they're going to get in the playoffs. It's a chance they don't see the field. So uh, coach decides uh, the win's not his top priority. He's going to uh, make sure the girls get some playing time on their senior night. As, as we said before, the game doesn't mean much other than for momentum. Um, so definitely not a bad decision by coach there. Absolutely. We see number four, Halco, coming back into the game. I think number 10, Price return to the game. Uh, I think catching action for the first time tonight, if I saw it right, number 39, uh, Kaylin Verbreich enters the game. And there was one more I think I missed, Seth, that entered for the Rough Riders. There's Verbreak uh, grabbing that ball on the back. 
Field. We've got just under two minutes in the second half. Good contact there. Hips and shoulders, just the way we like to see. Verbreich working against the attack on the uh, near side of the field. Verbreich pinning her down into the corner. Now, you don't want to see him taking too much time here. So they're going to, Bruffar is going to have to peel that ball out of there, preferably without giving him a corner kick. And they did a great job. Verbreich was the first one to put pressure on there. And now we've got a goal kick. Riders got to get here. Unfortunately, he plays it to Clark. Clark's definitely not the one you want to see with that ball. No, anybody but Clark. Anybody but Clark. Need to see a big kick from Brackman here. And there it is. Let's see if we can get an attack. Coming there we up go. One minute left in the... Riders need to push here. Half. The Riders do have a chance, folks. They had a minute left on the clock. Whole ball down here. Uh, that's, a, that's a throw you want to see hold. Uh, hold that throw. Get your offense up. Get your defense up. Uh, and see what kind of attack you can get in the last minute here. Triplet coming over here to move that ball. Nice little slide tackle. It's going to recover quickly. And Bass bring that ball into the corner, which is a great technique. Good for them, bad for us. We're going to have to work hard now. we got a throw-in coming up for Bath way down deep in Rough Rider on the Rough Rider half. Ooh, bad throw. Didn't bring it over ahead, so it and should be a Rough Rider throw oh, if we hurry one, up. First one we've seen tonight. 30 seconds, time for a run. In any other sport, you call a timeout here, Seth, and regroup, but it doesn't work that way. You just got to play <laughs> hot, right? Yep, you want to see the Riders push. Uh, if they can win the ball here, you need to see the whole team go, but uh, Basket wins a throw, and so probably going to see him kill the clock over here. They're going to try to. possession. Anyway. Maybe just boot the ball into the air. Yep, send somebody down deep. Definitely don't want to see the Riders give up another goal. That's good save by Brackman. Nice She's been great back, back there all night. Uh, unfortunately... Doesn't work out for her, though, on the scoreboard. So the story for tonight has been Brackman saves uh, for the most part. That probably makes number 12 for tonight. Now, that's not the story we really wanted uh, was that many saves. So at the end of 80 minutes of play, the Lady Wildcats come up on top of the Rough Riders 3-2. to two. We did see some good energy uh, in the second half of the second half there. They just couldn't overcome it. And, and I got to say, with, uh, with Bath's record, coming into this tonight their goals against we know are very stingy at less than two goals against their goals for less than what the Rough Riders had but I don't know if they played like this all year but they had a couple players there Seth that if it was their breakout whatever it was you yeah, mentioned it yeah, earlier I was they may get some WBO recognition and the players were talking about for Bath that the story besides the story about Brackman tonight with the saves number nine Hale and number seven Clark were just brilliant at shutting us down on the back half of the field, front half for us, and then the middle of the field. Yeah, and, and uh, you can tell just uh, through that handshake, you can tell Bath is feeling good about themselves, exactly what we were hoping for the Rough Riders. They're, they've got momentum. You can see the smiles on their faces. Uh, they're going to have a nice, relaxed week uh, off here. You know, they'll practice, but, I mean, as far as off from games, and they're going to be feeling real good go heading into the playoffs. And then you have the Riders, on the other hand, who a uh, frustrating night certainly didn't uh, not a bad result uh, especially in a game that's not a big deal uh, but you can just tell the frustration on the players not the result they wanted didn't play the way they wanted uh, so quite the opposite they're going to be heading into the playoffs like you said a three-game losing streak uh, not the feeling you want to have maybe a potential wake-up call maybe a hey let's get it get our stuff together a hard, maybe a hard week of practice from coach um, to get him going for playoffs be interesting to see um, both teams as we mentioned before probably have a pretty easy win uh, in that first round but it's going to get real hard real quick uh, CNOG in the bracket is not something that you want to see um, so it's going to be an interesting playoff run for both teams yeah yeah great point so the Riders dropped three in a row going into the tournament they'll have a lot to talk about a lot to work on uh, before we get up to the 16th and just a reminder uh, for Bath they've got Van Wert at home on October 16th and the Lady Riders they're going to host Napoleon back here on uh, also on Wednesday the 16th so a lot to uh, talk about a lot to work on um, in the next week and I'll probably talk about how to control the middle of the field fortunately for the seniors it's not their last game here at Rough Rider Field they'll be back and we expect big things out of the uh, Rough Rider so any last comments or anything Seth before we end our broadcast tonight nope well, as you mentioned before beautiful night uh, it's fun to be here uh, fun to see the end of the season for the Riders glad to see the seniors get in uh, some playing time there at the beginning and the end. Um, hope hope both teams, uh, or wish both teams some good luck. Uh, I'm definitely wishing the Riders more luck than anyone else, but uh, we'll see how it goes. 
Excellent. So we'll be signing off here in just a moment. Beautiful night at Rough Rider Field. We had senior night. We had the band here tonight. The both teams put on a great show. We'd like to see the game end the other way around, but uh, it was a great broadcast. Thanks to our technical crew, and special thanks to everybody that checked in tonight on Rider Nation Station. Appreciate it. Riders out. Thanks for watching another episode of Rider Nation Station. Help us help you by subscribing on YouTube or following us on Facebook.